would say my concentration actually oh, oftentimes is is not so much um, towards the gender role, but really around like the, the company, the people, the 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 forward movement of this, like how do we really create a movement within learning and development as a whole and kind of move the whole industry forward. So my focus kind of, I think very, very early on has always been on on that as opposed to kind of, you know, some of what we see with with focusing a little bit more on, on the gender side of it. But I think kind of stepping back and talking a little bit more about the CEO aspect in um, in an L&D space, I think for me, it's really important to look at the technology industry as a whole and look at different areas of tech and where are they going? What, you know, what is kind of some of the trends in different areas or in really rapidly growing industries? And what can we take from that and actually apply that to our overall, um, you know, learning aspect? And what's so interesting about L&D is that it's there's the technology component, right? I mean, we are wise tell we are a tech company, we have that tech platform, but really, you know, more than half of what we do is around people. And it's around, um, you know, how are we going to kind of change behaviors within within people and, and, and motivate people and engage people, right? And so I think that it's this cross, this cross section between technology and, you know, between this truly like people centric, piece and how do you become a, a, a how do you become a technology company that really sees that people centric side um, as well and so I think we're working every day to figure out what that is and a lot of times it's looking um, at the industry as a whole taking trends that we're seeing in, in other industries applying them to learning and development and then being really um really thoughtful around the people side of things and the true interaction, whether it be face to face and, and, and just truly ensuring that that people centric uh, is, moment is captured as well. It actually ties into a bit around the surrounding learners as well. Um, you know, I, I think I share so much of your, the way that you act as a leader as well. Like for me, it's very much about the movement first. And it was always about the problem solving first and, you know, being able to see that. And I definitely think very similarly of, I never see myself as, oh, well, these are the labels that I associate with myself and this is who I am today. It's, you know, no, I'm a person today and these are the ideas I have. But I do think that having that kind of um, background of a multitude of identities, it helps us notice things differently than maybe the status quo or the norm. And so a lot of what, Ali, I love how you've been bringing up the community. I think, you know, that tends to be, that's a different perspective that maybe, you know, you noticed from your background of how, wow, like, you know, we want to really think about the community behind learning not just that compliance check in the box type of thing. And mm -hmm. I think very similar for, similarly for me, it's as I walk around and I look at, you know, the multitudes of identities I carry, I tend to notice all of the different ways, times and places people are learning. And um, it's interesting to see other people notice the identity piece before me. Like I know when Lisa and I published Designing for Modern Learning, Last year, someone posted on LinkedIn, um, hey, you know, our, we don't see many people of color authoring L&D books. Does anyone have any recommendations? And Designing for Modern Learning came up on that list. And I just thought that was so interesting. So like when we published Design for Modern Learning, I didn't even think of myself as, oh, this is a person of color author written book, but somebody else noticed that. So I just, I do think it's really interesting what we notice and what we hold space for, because since then I've been looking at who comments and who posts and how, and like, what are they saying? And I've noticed a lot of times the status quo, and I wonder, Ali, if you've had this experience where a lot of people will, um, you can tell they're traditional thinkers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is because they're the ones really hyper focused on the language you're using, and they're trying to poke holes in in like all your ideas. <laughs> and you're just like, okay, but you're you're like distracting from the essence of this. Mm -hmm. And so I just think that's like that's a really interesting thing about being someone with kind of like the 
not normative or, you know, again, like industrial age kind of status quo majority mindset. So, so I just wanted to answer a little yeah. bit of that as well. And I'm curious your, your thoughts to you, Ali. Yeah, I think that that, I, I think you brought up a lot of really great points there. I also think that even, even if I choose, I think we, we've actually connected on this, I think a little bit before, but even if I choose to maybe not, um, focus as much on, let's just say, cause as you brought up, like, let's say that, that the gender piece of it, it doesn't mean that that can't like move forward that, that group behind it. Right. And I absolutely like hope that, that, that happens. Right. And, and it, it just, it, so much of that is, is personally kind of like you were saying what you identify with personally, and then how that, uh, you know, re- is represented in, in, you know, whether it be the content you put out, the comments you make, you know, all the points that, that you just made as well. So I, I, uh, I'm, we see a, a lot of the same things together there. Well, yeah. and I think it's, it's very interesting that you, that you brought it up this way, Crystal, because it is, it's a great example of thinking, trying to put yourself out of your perspective when you're putting together programs, just like you're saying, like surrounding learners, think about others other people's perspectives and and that can really propel different different ways of problem solving right exactly like you know if you look at who's trying to lift up different perspectives versus who's trying to pull everything back to well this is you know this is the way we've always talked about things or this is how it's supposed to be and it's like okay so you're trying to bring us backwards And I often say this, you know, why is backwards progress so often our goal? Like, I would rather have people being okay, lifting up alternative perspectives, even if they're not perfect yet. 